If you're looking for a travel trailer with lots of floor space inside, you might want to consider a Murphy bed setup. They save lots of room, they're multifunctional. We found some awesome floor plans in this video. Stick around folks, you're going to want to check these out. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to our channel. If this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to our channel if you enjoy this video. And don't forget to hit that notification bell when you do so you'll be notified every single week when we put out a brand new video. But without any further ado, let's get started on our reviews of small travel trailers with Murphy beds. This travel trailer is the Keystone Hideout model number 181BH. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,515 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 585 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 5,100 pounds. The hitch weight is just 595 pounds. It measures in at 22 feet 9 inches long and it can sleep up to 8 people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you've got your Murphy bed and living area. It then wraps around to your dinette and kitchen area. Behind me here we have bunks and of course the bathroom. So here I am walking in the door of this travel trailer and my first impression is it looks really, really nice in here. I think Keystone's done a great job with the white cabinetry and the dark trim to create some contrast in here and it just looks really, really nice. Now on my right hand side here is where your Murphy bed and your sofa are located. So you can sit down right here and relax. You've got some cup holders that fold out right here. You can put your drink down, but all in all, it's a pretty comfy sofa to sit on. You'll notice also on each side of the sofa, there's an end table. Each end table has a couple of drawers. Then there's also receptacles and USB ports just on top of the end table or nightstands, however you want to look at them, because this serves as both your sofa and your bed. Now above the nightstands are these Nice wardrobe closets. These are very deep. I would say they're in the neighborhood of two to three feet deep. You can hang your garments up in there and still have room to put things underneath of them. Now, to get the Murphy bed to work, this is a great system. You just roll out the back of the sofa. It just rolls right over. Very nice and easy and convenient. Just pop one clip, lower this down, and then you've got your fold away mattress which is a Serta mattress, by the way, so pretty good quality. And there you go, you got a nice thick mattress to lay on. Now the size of this bed looks to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 74 inches by about 60 inches, so definitely a short queen bed. Over top here, you'll also notice we have some additional overhead storage, which is open. And then down below, you've got these cubbies behind each of the nightstands where you can store things away or put your phone or tablet or whatever you have that you need to stow away while you're sleeping at night. So here I am sitting at the dinette and this is a nice booth style dinette. Uh, you could sit four people here I think pretty comfortably. One thing you'll notice is it's got a nice big window that opens over top of the dinette so you can get some airflow through here. Nice light right up over top. And the dinette itself is set into a slide out, so it does create much more floor space inside of this travel trailer. Now this tabletop will drop down and this dinette will convert into another bed. And if you choose to do that, you would end up with about six feet, three inches by about uh, 42 inches wide. So decent amount of space. I would say an adult could sleep here. Certainly a child could comfortably fit in here as well. Now there is a bit of a step up, step up to get to this dinette. It's almost 12 inches tall, but they do have linoleum floor under here, which is a much, much better choice than carpet. So I like that part of the dinette as well. And then finally, underneath of the dinette, we have three nice sized drawers for additional storage. So across from the dinette is where the kitchen is located. This kitchen is called an inline kitchen. It just means all of your appliances are in 
one line. Starting up top here, we have a nice size cabinet for some storage. Then you have a regular microwave oven up here. You've got your vent hood with a fan and a light. You have a two burner stove, which I like the fact that they did it stacked instead of sideways because it helps create a little bit of countertop space here. And then you have a small single bowl sink with a gooseneck faucet overhead for washing up those dishes. Down below your sink, the door opens up and there's plenty of storage space under there. And you have a couple of drawers for all your kitchen utensils as well. Next, as we move on down the kitchen is the refrigerator. Now up top, it's got a very good size freezer and down below, it's got a very good size refrigerator as well. Now this is a 12 volt fridge, which means that it's gonna run on battery power or shore power. You don't need any propane to power this kind of refrigerator. The other big benefit of a 12 volt is that it runs on a compressor style motor, which will chill the refrigerator much quicker than the propane styles that we've seen so often. So here we are just beyond the kitchen and this is where the bunks are. Now this bunk and the bottom bunk are both really pretty good sizes. Let's give them a little quick measure here. This bunk is 72 inches by, gosh, about 48, 49 inches. So a decent amount of space on both bunks. The upper bunk does have a 300 pound weight capacity. So two kids could sleep up here very, very easily. Same thing down below. Now you will notice that the top bunk does have a light and also a window, but unfortunately there are no receptacles or USB ports up here. And the same is true for the bottom bunk. No USBs or receptacles for kids to recharge all their electronics. But the bottom bunk is pretty cool because there's a lot of storage under there. You can even fold up the bottom bunk, get it out of your way. Just close this little clip right here. And then you have awesome tall storage in here. You can store bikes, chairs, all kinds of stuff that normally you would not be able to store in a travel trailer. Here I am inside the bathroom and I'm standing inside the shower like I always am. And you guys know that I'm 5'11", but inside the skylight here, you've got about six feet, two inches of head space. So you guys that are taller than that are gonna to have to crouch down a little bit. Now this has a nice surround in here. It's got a separate shower wand that you can use. Off to my right is a little soap dish area. And uh, unfortunately it also has a shower curtain in here. You know I'm not a big fan of those. Uh, spend a couple extra bucks and put a retractable shower door in here. Very easy to do. Now Susan's in the shower and I'm standing out towards the door of the bathroom and you'll notice that there is a nice corner style medicine cabinet here. When you open it up, you have all this room inside because of the corner shelving that's in there. Down below that, you have a nice vanity sink and then additional storage down below. Here I am on the commode and as far as the elbow test goes, even with the door shut, I think I'd have plenty of room in both directions. This travel trailer is the Forest River Cherokee Wolf Pup model number 16 FQW. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,619 pounds, a very impressive cargo carry capacity of 1,926 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 5,545 pounds. The hitch weight is just 445 pounds. It measures in at 21 feet, 10 inches long, and it can sleep up to three people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side is where the owner's bed and the sofa are located. Then as we wrap around, we come into the kitchen area and the dinette area. And behind me here is where the bathroom is located. So my first impression of this camper is that it looks like it's a great, small, easy to use beginner's camper for a couple of reasons. Number one is there are no slides in here and it's very small and very light as well. So it's easy to tow. And I think it's just a perfect little camper for somebody that's a weekender or a beginner, like I said. Now on the right hand side here, they do have a sort of a pseudo Murphy bed set up here. And uh, this is a brand new camper and the mattress is still in all wrapped up. So I can't pull the mattress out and show you really how it unfolds. But basically the sofa knife jack the sofa jack knives and lays flat and then you would pull the mattress and it would cover this whole entire area. Uh, the size of it is about 60 inches wide and half of the mattress is about 37 and a half inches. So it's going to be about a 75, 76 inch mattress. So this would be considered a short queen size mattress in here. Um, 
I'm not a real big fan of this design per se because I feel like you're wasting some space up here, but it could also be used for storage while you're traveling down the road. Or you could store things up here during the day, but if you do that, then at night when you make your bed, you've got to move all that stuff. So it's got its pluses and minuses, that's for sure. Now on each side of the bed, there is a wardrobe cabinet that when the bed is in this position, it's very difficult to open these doors. Uh, but when the mattress is laying flat, the doors will open a lot easier because they'll go over top of the mattress. Uh, there is a hanging bar in here, so you can hang all of your garments and things like that. There are a couple of overhead lights here, so when you're laying in bed, you've got some reading lights. And then up top, it's got these big cabinet doors. It's all open all the way across, but there's plenty of room up there for additional storage. Now on each side of the mattress, there are also receptacles and USB ports that are available as well. So you can plug in all of your electronics. Uh, I'm not sure if there's room enough for a CPAP machine in here or not. If you had a small one, I guess it could work. Um, but uh, you can certainly have enough room to plug in your phones, tablets, you know, things like that while you go to sleep at night. Now in the kitchen area, we'll kind of start from our top and work, work our way down. But this is what's known as an inline kitchen. All of your kitchen countertop appliances are all in line. So it's a very efficient kitchen setup. Now up top here, we have a very nice size cabinet with plenty of storage up there. Then we have a regular microwave oven here. Below that, we have a two burner propane cooktop and a very nice, big, round, deep, single bowl sink. It's got a gooseneck faucet overhead, which is very nice. And then it's got a spot here where you can actually put hand sanitizer in here and keep your hands even cleaner. Now on the right hand side of where the kitchen sink is located, you've got this sink top cover so you can create more countertop space, but you also have all of this countertop space here as well, which is really great because you can put your toaster, coffee, uh, uh, a coffee machine, whatever right here, and you've got a receptacle right on the side that's nice and handy and in a good position. Now down below your sink, we also have additional storage space down there. Now just past the two burner stove is where the refrigerator is located. Now this is a 12 volt refrigerator, so it'll run off a battery. Um, when you plug into shore power, the shore power charges your battery and this runs off your battery. So there you go. Uh, great size fridge, big, big, nice roomy freezer. So plenty of room for all your cold storage needs. Now, while we're in the kitchen, I want to address the, uh, the uh, air conditioner real quick. We have a lot of people say, hey, you guys never talk about the air conditioner, if it's included or not, when you do your tours. Well, almost every sales piece of paper that has the trailer with all the options in it listed the air conditioner is almost always an option but the dealers almost always order every trailer with an optional air conditioner so it is an option but the dealers order them with it so in almost every case almost every travel trailer comes with an air conditioner unless for some reason the dealer did not order it that way but that's that's kind of how it works now, just across from the kitchen area is where your dinette area is located. Now, this table will drop down and you can create one more sleeping space. And if you did that, you would have about eh, 71 inches by about 30 inches. So I would say a smaller adult or a child could certainly sleep here and be very comfortable. But one thing I like about this dinette is you know, two people can sit here very, very comfortably and move some of the sales paperwork out of the way. But it has this gigantic window that looks right out onto the campsite of your trailer. So in, when you're sitting here eating a meal, you can look right outside. You'll see your picnic table, your fire ring, your chairs, all that nice stuff. So I love it when the dinettes are on the campsite of the travel trailer. Also, you'll wanna note that down below, underneath both of the dinette seats, there's also additional storage. Finally, one last thing to note is right over my head here is where your TV is gonna be located. So they've got a receptacle and a cable rough in on the ceiling, a little bracket here on the wall so you can hang your TV here. It's kind of weird that it's over my head, but this is really a pole mount, so the TV would actually be up higher 
And so one person can eat dinner and look at the TV or people can sit on the couch and watch TV or when you're laying in bed at night, you could see the TV from here as well. So not a bad TV placement at all. Now you may have noticed while we've been going through this kitchen that there are no kitchen drawers in here anywhere. So where are you gonna put your silverware and things like that? Well, uh, we had the same situation in our class C RV and we bought what's called a hide a drawer and these can be mounted right underneath of your kitchen table or dinette table and then you pull them out and that's where all your utensils are located you could get one on each side of this table and create two drawer spaces for yourselves i'll put a little link in the show notes down below if you're interested in something like that for your rv but we've used it in our class c and it's worked out just great now over top of the dinette here, you've got all of your controls for seeing your tank readings, for your radio, also for your HVAC settings and temperature settings in here. And then you've got this big cabinet up top here, which goes all the way behind. Now one thing about this cabinet door, they did not put a piece of hardware in here to hold it up so that when you go to get in here, it's gonna be a little inconvenient. You can always buy a little piece of hardware on Amazon which just gets mounted on this side piece and the front or the back piece of this cabinet door and it'll hold it up for you in place. I don't know, for five or six bucks, you can buy the part. It just screws right in. It's really nice and easy. But if you have a situation like this in your camper, it's very easy to remedy. So here I am in the shower in the back uh, bathroom and this bathroom is a really a good size bathroom. It runs the entire width of the trailer. Um, so it feels nice and big and spacious in here. Now standing in this shower, uh, I've got a little corner shelf here that I can put a shampoo bottle on and maybe some soap. Uh, there's really not a lot of other storage in here. So you'd probably have to buy some sort of a shower caddy or something to make it a little more convenient for yourself. Now height wise in here, you guys know I'm 5'11 and my hair is just hitting the ceiling in here. So I would say you've got six feet of headroom inside the shower and then outside the shower and in the entire coach, you have about six feet, six inches of headroom. So decent amount of headroom there, but for you taller folks, you're gonna sort of be crouching down in the shower a little bit. And the reason for that is because in travel trailers, the shower base is lifted up off the floor by four or five inches so they can fit the shower trap under there and that way that's what reduces the headroom in the shower and that's why i always try to get a shower headroom measurement because it's not the same as the rest of the camper now one last thing to point out in here is it does have a shower curtain in here and you guys know by now if you've been watching any of our videos i cannot stand shower curtains because they stick to you when you're taking a shower and they're just not that nice but you could buy a retractable shower door and install that in here. I think a retractable shower door is around a hundred bucks, maybe less. Um, and then you have a nice shower enclosure that won't blow in on you when you're taking a shower. So now Susan and I have switched sides inside the bathroom. She's standing in the shower, as you can see her in the mirror, and I'm standing over here by the vanity. Now this is a really, really big vanity top, lots of countertop space around it couple of receptacles there so you can plug in a shaver, blow dryer, what have you. And then it's got a nice medicine cabinet over top. Now I kind of feel like they've wasted some room in here. I think they should have probably taken this medicine cabinet and just gone side to side because what do you do with these little areas on each side of your medicine cabinet? Now, I'm sure you could buy some aftermarket shelving and, and put it in place there and then you can store things there as well to create some room for yourself. But personally, I would like to have seen that take up the whole amount of space for you so you don't have to do things after you buy your camper. It's just done and ready to go. Anyway, uh, just my opinion on that. Down below here, you also have just a little bit of storage underneath of your sink. And the reason there's not more storage here is because outside there's a little outdoor refrigerator, which is great if you want to store some beers or sodas and then you can grab them while you're outside without having to come into your camper. So here I am on the commode and I gotta say, we are passing the elbow test in here with flying colors. So here we are outside this camper and this is towards the back of the camper where the bathroom is located and under the kitchen sink, here's the little refrigerator that I was talking about and not a bad size fridge. You know, you can keep some beers and sodas and some sandwiches in there, whatever, but it's just easy access while you're outside. In the very front of the travel trailer, you'll notice that you have a pretty big storage area up front. 
And finally, on the rear of this travel trailer, this entire piece drops down and it allows you to have extra storage while you're traveling down the road. This travel trailer is the Winnebago Hike, model number H1316MB. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,156 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,044 pounds, for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 4,200 pounds. The hitch weight is 566 pounds. It measures in at just 15 feet, 11 inches long, and it can sleep up to two people. When you walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side is where the kitchen is located. Then we have the wet bath area that wraps around on into the sofa and bedroom area. Now, as I mentioned, just on the right hand side is where the kitchen area is located. And this is a very compact and efficient style kitchen. First of all, all of your controls are located right here, very conveniently by the door. Up top here, we have a very large cabinet for some storage. Then they have a convection microwave oven in here, which is a great little feature to have. You can bake or microwave. And so it's just a perfect option for this little trailer. Now below that, there's this drawer that comes out for additional countertop space. One thing you can use this for is they do, uh, this unit does come with a two burner induction stove. So you could set that here and then plug it in around the corner and use that for cooking with pots and pans. You could also take your induction burner outside if you'd like to cook out there. Now the kitchen, well, just below that, is where the refrigerator is and there's even a separate spot up top here for ice the sink area has a shelf above with a little bit of storage space up here below that we have a nice size kitchen sink in here with a big old gooseneck faucet and it even has a sprayer that you can pull out there's also a connect charging station back here in the corner and of course i mentioned just a second ago there's a receptacle here that you can plug into if you want to run you know, your cooktop or any other kitchen appliance for that matter, or a blender if you wanna make a batch of margaritas up, which I highly recommend. Down below the kitchen sink, there's a really big cabinet space down here for additional storage. Now, as we wrap on around, we're gonna pass the bathroom and we'll cover that last, but there's a nice wardrobe closet here. You can hang your garments in there or just use it for general storage. Now, here I am on the couch in here, and actually this is a really pretty comfortable couch Plus, I'm really tired from walking around all day, so it feels extra good. But anyway, this couch is really three things in one. Number one, it is your couch where you can sit here and relax. And actually, you can enjoy some TV because just off to my right here is where the TV rough-in would be located. So you can chill out here, watch a little TV, and take it easy. The number two way that this couch is used is it is your dinette. And there's a freestanding table that comes along with this unit, so you can just set up your table right here enjoy a meal maybe watch some tv and relax and the third function of this couch is this becomes your bed because we have a murphy bed set up and let me show you how that works first of all you just jackknife the sofa out and then you just pull the murphy bed straight on down and then once you do that you can see the trailer really opens up and becomes much more spacious inside. Now on each side of the bed, there's a little end table there, plus there's a receptacle and USB port. Above the bed, there's a window in the back, and there's a light underneath of the four door cabinets above for all of your storage needs. Now let's measure up this bed and see how much space we're working with here. This mattress is 74 inches by 54 inches wide, so this will be considered a short, full-size bed but not bad for a small trailer like this. So the last thing to note about this couch area is there are a couple of cabinet doors below. Now these doors just sort of flop down and you sort of have to get on your hands and knees to reach under here to pull your stuff in and out. I think it would have been a lot nicer if they had put drawers under here instead of doors. And just to my right is another little door that you can use to store things away as well. So here I am in the bathroom in this unit and this is a wet bath. Uh, but it's a pretty good size, especially it has a lot of height room, headroom in here. Let's take a measurement and see. Usually uh, when I'm in a wet bath, I'm crouched down pretty tight. But in this one, we have, wow, six feet, five inches of space into the skylight. The entire ceiling in here is not that tall. But let's take a look and see what the height is through the entire, uh, we're like six feet, six inches throughout the entire rig. So that's a pretty good amount of head space in here. Now, this wet bath is 
you know, just big enough to get in here and take a shower. There's also a little corner sink here that you could use. It even has a little sink faucet for that. And finally, when I'm sitting here on the commode, there's no way I'll ever pass the elbow test in here, but this is good enough of a bathroom to get the job done. Two other things to note inside the shower are the shower rod above my head here. So if you have a wet bathing suit or anything you need to hang up in here, you certainly can do that. And finally, there's a little storage compartment right behind the commode where maybe you could store some shampoo or some soap or something like that. So in the very back of this unit, there's a very nice storage area here, which is actually located under the bed from inside. I love the fact that you can access it from two different sides of this travel trailer. Hey guys, let us know which one of these travel trailers with a Murphy bed you like the best and why in the comments down below. We would love to hear from you. And if you want to check out some more travel trailers with Murphy beds, just click the box down below. And Susan and I will see you in the next video.